Our subject here today is Life's a Game, the art of game design. Bear in mind that from now on, I will not see our chat. That's why we have here our wonderful friend, Wukash, who, my wonderful friend, I actually know this guy longer than I do not know him. Like, never mind, I will explain it maybe one day. Um, uh, right now, it's a bit of stress, it's a bit of frustration due to the technical issues, so to the point. Uh, I cannot see the chat. He will respond in the chat and he will uh, converse with you there. Uh, therefore, uh, up front, I will tell you that if you have any questions to anything, just write them down in the chat and uh, I will be uh, leaving sections of, uh, of time where Wukash will read those questions uh, from the chat, and I will try to answer them as best as possible. For now, I'm Wukash until he's not here. Okay. Okay. Uh, Hania, you're also excellent, Wukash. Uh, so now, part one is what actually is a game and why it is awesome. Part <laughs> one, meaning those first hour and a half, right now, little less, that I will try to introduce you to the uh, concept of structural thinking about games, because we take games as granted, but actually there's a lot of science to it, uh, a lot of uh, consideration to make a game, to make a good game, uh, to make a game that will actually work as a tool for us. So we will have introduction. The introduction is something when we will meet each other a um, little, uh, little uh, closer then what is actually a game then we will have a discussion which i will also gamify for you so that you might have some fun i hope and then we will have exercise and during the exercise uh, we will introduce you to our platform which we like to think as uh, like autocad for game designers uh, application that tries to facilitate the game creation process Mm, as in the uh, context of creating games for social change. So now, um, we're in the introduction part. This is me. I am a social therapist. I'm a social worker. I'm a scouting tutor and inst instructor for years. I'm a philosopher, a scient. I also play uh, RPGs for more than two decades right now. Uh, and uh, games are my life. I have dedicated entirety of, of it to it. And here is my friend Wukash, who unfortunately you, will, you are not able uh, to see right now. Uh, he uh, is the yin to my yang uh, because uh, he uh, has an unparalleled ability to compartmentalize the overflow of my uh, content that I produce. So as you can see, uh, dreams about to be a carpenter, a physicist, uh, lecturer at Polish Japanese Academy, uh, and he's a good teacher too, uh, and UX designer. Now I have uh, um, a request for you because uh, uh, perfect timing for me. <laughs> ah yes, okay. So I give you the stage. Thank you for such a kind words. Uh, uh, it was it was really nice to hear, and I'm happy to 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 hear it. And hello, everybody. I'm very sorry for being uh, a bit late, but yeah, technical issues is the is the thing today. Uh, so, uh, as Martin said, the most important thing is I dream about being a carpenter. But for now, we'll do uh, we'll deal with games and we'll think how to design games, especially online games, and uh, how. Um, how to translate this this experience from uh, offline games, from city games, and so on, and uh, make use of them when designing online games, which is, I think, quite uh, on topic with the pandemic in mind. Okay, uh, I will give back the voice to Martin. Uh, it's really nice to meet you, and we'll hear in a moment. Yes, but uh, stay here for a while because I need you to introduce our uh, wonderful uh, participants here to the Envision Freehand uh, tool. Which we'll use okay, sure. Hmm? 
Okay, because uh, this is not a lecture today. Uh, this is a workshop and we uh, want to have a space where uh, you will be able to work on uh, different, uh, maybe not assignments, but different tasks and challenges. Uh, so to, to, to make the space for that, we'll use exactly Envision freehand. Uh, thank you. Oh, I would really love to, to read your names. Joan? I guess so. I don't know. Uh, for pasting the link, you, you were uh, quicker than me. Uh, and uh, please go uh, into this website and create uh, yourself a new account. It's completely free, uh, so don't worry about paying for anything. Uh, they don't send uh, any spam emails. I think you you can always opt out uh, from their uh, from their newsletter. So uh, there is nothing nothing bad in creating this account, and this is a great tool for us to uh, collaborate during this workshop. So. Uh, Mm -hmm. And the sooner you can uh, achieve this uh, feat, the better, because uh, each and every uh, thing here will be uh, in part uh, reference to our uh, mutual main board, which I hope you will be able to see soon. Uh, and on our main board, uh, we will be working on uh, things here, as it is a workshop. It was a bit of a... Um, challenge to translate my working style into online fashion. I hope it will work. But this uh, is uh, a workshop about designing online games. But of course, to design an online game, you need to uh, first understand uh, games in general. So there will be 70, 80% of this workshop will be about the logic, the tools of creating a game, uh, but I will try to furnish it with as much detail, as many details uh, as uh, possible about my experience in creating a social online RPG. Uh, so, uh, of course, if you will need more uh, details, I hope I will be able to provide them. Uh, Yes, and now, uh, can we, do we have uh, all the participants on on our main board or do we uh, need some more time? Okay, I think that uh, mm, you have to mm, share the, the email address that, uh, I, I think the solo is, is okay. Uh, ask, uh, answering the question in the chat, the solo, solo is the thing. Uh, so, Mm, when you will share with me the email address that uh, on which the account you have, I will be able to add you to our space, and we'll uh, then be able to create uh, to to collaborate in, in Vision. Okay, so wait, wait, wait. Let yeah. me come in because I have all the email addresses of people who are here for this workshop. So, do you need to send something to all of them? And uh, now, actually, I have to add their email addresses. If 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 the addresses uh, are the same as uh, the addresses made for uh, used in the Envision account, yeah, it will be much easier, and you don't have to. Okay, I will send it to you all online. Wonderful, thank you. Yay, yay! Is it, this is so awesome when we see those cursors. Everybody moves around. We can play uh, some, uh, I don't know, catch. I'm trying to catch uh, the, uh, like, Diana, orange cursor. I, I caught you. You need to run away from me right now. Yeah, th this works. <laughs> and Paulina, now, now now you need to run away from me. OK, this, <laughs> this is so fine. Please try to uh, associate yourself with uh, the tools that you have here. Uh, we have uh, drawing utensils. Uh, of course, you can uh, reverse everything that you've drawn by Ctrl Z command. Uh, we have uh, writing down text. Uh, we can create shapes. We can upload images. Uh, and also, we can make sticky notes. And I especially like sticky notes. 
the sticky notes are very uh, cool thing to organize content. We will be using them soon in our general uh, general uh, conduct. Uh, of course, you can also click at anything that you made and delete it or widen it like I did with this square that now encompasses all the square squares, one square to rule them all. Uh, yes, and there are reactions. Reactions are quite cool. Of course, uh, you can react to our wonderful photos. Oh, gosh. Oh, Martin, can you please share? Not all the people during the technicalities can see. So, Wukash, can you share, uh, like, can you share your presentation or your screen for all sure. to know what you are talking about now? Okay, sure. So, to to make uh, to register into Envision, uh, we have to enter okay. the. Just uh, please show what how you are in already. Okay. Okay, when we are in. Sure, no problem. This is um, this is the Envision window, and this is our tool. Uh, on the left side, you have the menu, uh, and here is the option to choose a space. We have two spaces because we have two paths of this workshop, and we are on the online path. So please select the workshop online path, and these are the uh, boards that we'll be using. There is one main board that uh, we want uh, that is for everybody and want to meet with everybody in here. And then uh, when you will be divided into groups, you will have, all of you will have separate boards that you can use uh, during the workshop to uh, prepare some work uh, within our groups and uh, uh, on your, like, uh, maybe private, uh, in separation. Uh, from other uh, members of the of the workshop. So inside this main board, I clicked on it. Uh, it loads a while. Ah, oh, we can see uh, first sketches. And uh, this is our space to to give uh, this this uh, basic information for all of us. Mm. So please meet everybody in here. Uh, let me know if uh, if you are not able to to uh, access this space. I can see in the chat that uh, some um, that some of you uh, are not invited yet. So uh, I will take care of that. What will happen in a flash? Uh, I wanted to wait a bit for everyone to be already on the platform. We have thirteen people right now. Uh, still waiting for more, but I will carry on with the subject. Uh, we first need to take a selfie, like this wonderful gentleman right here. Uh, and uh, I need you all to people that are already on the platform, already on uh, in, uh, on Envision, to do. Uh, just the thing. Take your cell phones, uh, make yourself a selfie right now, just in this moment, this instance, where you are right now, and try to make it as telling about you as possible. Why? Because in the workshop, we need to work together. We need to see each other. We need to converse with each other. We need to be closer than just my voice going through the lines. Uh, when you're done, please upload your uh, image to our Envision platform. It's pretty simple, actually. You send the photo from your cell phone using an email or messenger or whatever you use. And when you have it on your computer, you just upload it to the Envision platform using the tool that is over there all the tools are in the uh, in the in the side of your screen at the left hand side so i'm going to uh, make my own uh, selfie uh, also right now so that you might see me how i'm faring in this instance and it will just take a flash uh, 
you don't have to like think too much about it. Okay. I believe that we do not have Leonardo DiCaprio on this uh, meeting here, but that's that's a great meme, anyhow. And the memes will be here in uh, opulent quantities soon. Oh, hello. Uh, you can. Uh, change the size of this uh, image. Uh, try not to make them too large because we need to, uh, everybody needs to uh, be able to fit in here. Uh, if uh, the uh, previous image uh, stays, just delete the previous image. There's me. Oh, we're so many. <laughs> so many of us. Oh, can I? We have uh, an incredible picture that <laughs> does not want to remove itself. Unfortunately, I need to remove the beautiful uh, picture from before. No, it's it's quite quiet. Everyone is working. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. I wonder what's wrong with this 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 one. Please uh, try to arrange your photos uh, in some sort of a grid, like everyone try to be. God, people, you're also beautiful. I am absolutely, absolutely ecstatic to have you all, all here. And of course, when you're done with your photo, when you already have it, make a sticky note and on that sticky note, write down who are we looking at right now. Somebody already thought about this. Yay, so many of us. And Leonardo, somebody please uh, name DiCaprio here or 
is he here as DiCaprio or, or or that person from Django? Like, I don't know. I don't know who inserted Leo, Leo here, but name him as well. He is our unspoken uh, hero of this workshop. <laughs> so pretty. You are all so awesome. What is going on with this picture? <laughs> okay, do we have everyone, uh, Lukasz? Uh, everyone is invited, I believe. And uh, actually, it's impossible to count all the images, so. <laughs> True. True. Uh, yeah, there is a question a few seconds ago from Vasilis. And uh, Yes, people that are not registered for the workshop and that are only spectators and only watching us. Uh, mm -hmm. Only people registered, uh, please go uh, into the Envision because we'll have working groups. If there will be too many of us, it will be uh, impossible to work together uh, in groups. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, so Anastasia, uh, please can you uh, give me again your email address? I'll try to solve it. I wanted you to uh, do it in five minutes, uh, but I think that we already took a little more. So please, uh, we need a grid. I will try to okay. set a for this. So here, let's. Do you see my blue square? Please fit all the uh, all your uh, pictures into this square so that we can free up the center of our workspace and try to make all the pictures fit fit in. Okay, Anastasia, I've just sent you uh, an invitation again. It should be okay right now. Right. So come on, come on, move your photos to the square, please. Hurry up. We already. Uh, yeah. The square are... is on the left side. Yes. You you can zoom out your screen to see a bigger picture. Uh, option to zoom out the screen is in the bottom right corner of the screen. Some people already moved. Some people, uh, people not yet, so please. I have one, two, three, four, five, six people right now. Come on, people. Translate yourself to the blue square. On the left. So many mice, indeed. They are all running around. I will just keep it. I have moved so many mice to the blue square as it is important. Because that's what we are right now. You're all so pretty. I would really like to meet you all in the real life. This is actually a, a, quite, a, quite a problem for me as I'm a type of uh, extrovert that uh, loves to meet face to face with people and speak to people, to have you all as a silent crowd. So uh, your pretty pictures uh, merged into this one beautiful grid will give me at least some comfort. Still, we have people that did not translate to the left. Please move to the blue square. I repeat. 
please move to the blue square on the left. All right. Uh, I think that uh, I don't know. Maybe we can move some of the uh, photos. Okay. So you're doing it by hand, right? Yeah. Cool. I think I will task myself with a similar clearing operations of the photos that are no longer necessary and elements that are no longer necessary as we will need our, it's an infinite loop, it is. What the, <laughs> what happened with this? Zhit. I have stolen your picture. I don't know who is that, but I have uh, inserted it uh, into our into our square. Okay, I and think it's all of us. Yeah. Remember to use uh, remember to use this tool. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. We have uh, Leonardo DiCaprio as a twenties uh, participant, or we uh, lack one person. Anyways, I need to carry on with the subject as this took us some time. Uh, this was the first exercise because now you need to do the harder part you will be divided into groups and uh, now uh, the groups will have their workspace in those uh, these workspaces you will be uh, convening with each other and also you will have your own breakout rooms because every single exercise here is a group exercise well maybe except for one uh, little game that i have designed for you here and uh, now what I will do is I will uh, ask you to create, uh, to make your, translate yourself to move those photos of you uh, into five distinct uh, areas. Uh, could you, Lukas, uh, create the areas in the places they are best, best suited? Uh, Oh, they are in the middle and they're, yes, I yeah. think they will suffice. They will suffice in this. In the middle, you can see the areas like this green circles. Uh, green circles. Yes. Divide yourself into five groups of four people. There's 20 of you. So five groups of four people. Uh, please allow me to uh, change the magnitude of this photo. Try to make those photos fit. Like, do not take entire circle. Try to make your faces be there. Come on. Why I made you first translate yourself into that square and then into the circles? Well, mostly because I want you to be as proficient in this tool as possible. I want you to be able to uh, execute uh, all the um, directives uh, as fast as possible. So I need you to have a bit of a practice. Every game requires to know a tool that you are using. And what I have found in the online gaming, it is an absolute chore 
to translate a game into an online environment as online environment requires to use either tools that are familiar to the users. That way we adapt already pre-existing um, proficiencies into our own cause, or we need to have another tool. And what is the problem with having tools that are um, familiar to the users? Well, they sometimes do not give us an option that we need. We sometimes need uh, a tool to do a specific thing, to emulate a specific thing. For example, we need a tool that have a dice roll simulator. Yes. So if like people in our area that we want to make a game, that our target audience does not know to how to use, for example, Discord, which has dice simulator, we need to introduce them to Discord. Uh, and it every new tool has a problem, has problems of its own. Like for example, this is, imagine ourselves sitting in one room with me giving you a task. Make yourself an area for your group, divide yourself into groups. You would do it in no time. Even though you don't know each other, you would create those groups. And if I show you places in which we are, like you, group one stands here, group two stands here, you would do this in no time. Also, if I'd give you a Polaroid and asked you to make yourself selfies and arrange these selfies into a square, you would also do it in no time. However, when we try to make any game in online environment, we need to uh, take into account immense time needed for introducing uh, the tool that we're using and also technical issues as you could see here that even though we prepared fiercely for this moment there were technical issues I still don't see everyone here and this is a problem uh, for me even though you made yourself a photo you need to pick a group right now and from now on I will uh, introduce the pressure of time. This is not uh, a lecture uh, during which you can uh, go make yourself a coffee, uh, watch an, a Netflix show or something like that, and just passively listen to my voice. Either I have your full commitment and activity and uh, your attention, or, well, we will go on without you. So now, uh, from this moment on, 60 seconds to translate yourselves into groups of four. And I will start working with these groups of four. You got 40 seconds left. Twenty seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten. Five. Okay. And we begin. So, as you can see here, we have a group, uh, okay, we have three groups of four, that's pretty decent. Uh, I see that you don't have a group right now. Uh, Marius, uh, Marius, please uh, add yourself to one of the groups. Uh, you will be just a group of five, mm -hmm. therefore. Uh, okay, so back to the presentation. Mm -hmm. Now, in these groups, think of a time you were 10 years old. I hope you can see the presentation in Hopin right now. And think about the game that you enjoyed as a 10-year-old. Think about how you felt using it, how you felt playing it. Why did you enjoy it so much? What made this game exceptional and what made this game uh, so cool, so awesome? Why this game was awesome? And now you will be given 
breakout rooms. Uh, I give the floor to Wukash. Yeah, and exactly. In these groups that you created, uh, you go to your breakout room and start working on this subject. You have three minutes for person from the moment Wukash stops explaining the two task. So it's, I, as, as the groups are not all four people, we must go with the flow. You have just 12 minutes, 10 minutes to discuss this in personal. We okay. need you to turn on your video and speak to yourself. Yes, to each other. Hmm? Martin, so yes, now you hmm. recommend people to go to breakout rooms. The breakout rooms are, of course, the other sessions. So after you go to the margin on the left and you see sessions now, you can just remove yourself from this one and go to the other session. So leave here and go back. After how many minutes people should be here back? We, uh, let's, let's make it 10 minutes. After 10 minutes, so we meet back at 11.56 because okay. it's 11.56 at my clock, so 11.56. So uh, there are five breakout rooms for online. Please choose randomly, right? Uh, and no, no, no. we're in a group. We are, we are already divided into groups. So look in, in the vision, what is the number of your group? So okay. for example, we can see that uh, Ileana, I'm sorry if I read your names wrong, uh, is in a group one, so you should join the session uh, with a group one in its name. Okay. So everybody should look and envision in which group they are, what is the number of the group, and then change the session to the session with appropriate name. The name are online breakout one, online breakout two, online breakout three, four and five. Exactly. Yeah. So is it for sure understood who is going to which number? OK, in case of observers, I suggest to uh, stay in this session. Mm, the, the sessions for the groups are their private space to discuss their projects. So uh, I think it's best to leave it to them. OK. See you in 10. See you in 10. Uh, there is a question about questions. If you have any questions, please ask them in the chat. And in the first uh, convenient moment, we'll address them and answer them. Uh, in the breakout rooms, uh, there is a task for each group. Uh, each group has to think about their favorite game when they were at the age of 10. Uh, and uh, Martin, please uh, fill, fill the gaps in here. Uh, yeah. Decide on, on one game that made the biggest, I don't know, impact on you. You have uh, the information what needs to be done at uh, my uh, at at Hopin, uh, I am showing it on the screen right now. You need to tell people in your group with your camera on why did you enjoy this game so much? What was this game that you loved when you were ten? What why what made this awesome? What made this memorable? Uh, Anastasia, uh, if uh, you are not in any group yet, you have to paste your uh, photo, your selfie, into the circle where is a free space. Uh, each group has to have maximum of four people, right? At this point, maximum of five because maximum we already five. have. Yeah, so yes. choose a group for yourself and... Uh, mm, 
to to maybe save some time, uh, you can just write your name or paste and paste your uh, selfie a bit later. Uh, Django, uh, not it's not Django. I don't. Unfortunately, please forgive me. I don't know. Uh, we have how to, to. We have to watch it again. Let's face it. Yes, <laughs> yes we have to. We have to. Uh, translate yourself uh, to the group three, uh, the third group, as there are four people right now. We can fill in one more person there. So uh, one of you can can join the third group. Seven minutes remaining. So right now we are working in our groups, seven minutes remaining. The instructions are on my screen uh, at Hopin. I want you all to tell people in your group with your camera on what made this game memorable. What was your favorite game when you were 10 and what made this game memorable? I want you to all know each other, see each other, hear each other's voice. There are people that still does not have a group. Please combine into one group. Like we have Django at group five. And let me have a closer look. It was a bit hard to hear you, Martin. Can you please uh, tell again? Uh, it was hard to hear me. Okay, is it is it yeah, okay yeah, now? Something. So please yeah. combine into groups. If you don't have a group yet, please join a group that already have a join the group number two. Join the group oh, yeah. number okay. two. Everyone that does not have a group yet, please go to the group number two. And also people from group one, four, and three go into the uh, breakout rooms at Hopin. Yes, Wukash. Yes, exactly, and I think it's happening because when I look at the groups, the uh, about at the sessions, uh, there are already people there. So there is only three people in the breakout room, number three, and should be there should be four people. So the last person, please join them. I will remain remind you all that this is a workshop. And as this is a workshop, I need your constant participation and active participation. Because what you will get from this session is a clear derivative of what you invest. And this is the same with the games. I'm Right now, speaking mostly to the spectators, which hover around the place. The games are all... Uh, you cannot, as an organizer, make a game and expect it to do things without participants' uh, interactions, without participants' uh, attachment to the game, investment into the game. And this is partly a problem with online activities. You cannot have people okay. in one place. Okay. Uh, the, to enter the breakout rooms, you have to leave this session and choose a different session from the sessions panel of the uh, sessions button on the left side. And we'll be back here at 11.56 to, uh, to go on with the workshop. So you have still two minutes to, for your work in the breakout rooms. For this time, you don't have to follow our faces and our screens, so uh, don't don't uh, bother with that. Mm. So you have to uh, change the session and to go to the uh, other session, which is called, uh, for example, online breakout one, online breakout two, 
and so on. The number is associated with your group that uh, you just have chosen. Okay, Yulia, can I help you somehow? Uh, you see that there are no room. You see that there are no rooms. Are you? Uh, have you joined any group in the? Uh, yeah, I was talking to Yulia, asking her whether uh, uh, is she in any of the groups. In which groups? In which group are you? Okay, uh, Yulia, I can find you in any of the group. So maybe uh, you're in none of them. Have you uh, chosen a group for you and the Envision? Okay, it's 11.56. Okay, Martin. Yes. Uh, okay. I think it's time for us. So we'll go through the different sessions and uh, and ask people to come back in here. Okay. Uh, okay. Please do so. I will do as well. I will go right now to the session four. It's just a discussion about uh, your favorite games between you. So everybody shares their favorite game and why it was so great. I'm just writing the answer. Uh,
Okay, Paulina is asking a question uh, about the shortcut mm -hmm. for selecting a group of elements and moving them together. We have to hold shift key and you can select then many elements at once and then move them. No problem. So we should be, all of us should be back in here at yes. least. I think everybody uh, have left uh, their uh, groups and their sessions. Excellent. So uh, I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, all of us has uh, is, is back in here, but I hope so. Yes, we will then carry on with our business. Okay. So after this situation, why I made you do it? <laughs> this is what I was uh, talking about a moment ago. If, if you wish to create Uh, Martin, wait a second. Martin. Yes. Okay. Yes. Uh, there were some problems with your voice, so uh, we couldn't hear you. Can you please repeat uh, everything you said? Yes, of course. Now it's okay. You see, you hear me now? Yeah, we hear you. Perfect. So, as now you are all at least basically uh, adjusted to this tool that we will be using in the future, let's get to the meat of things. I will, I'm doing this for most of my adult life, about life. About 12 years, I am using games to influence behaviors, to influence groups. So in general, I will be giving you my theoretical, uh, well, boiled down practice. I have boiled down my it's again wait a second practice to some and i will show and then you will be given tasks so uh, that Martin, at the end in the last uh, uh, group uh, shared Martin, from this factor <laughs> wait a second uh yes. we lost like last 10 seconds of you yeah there is a suggestion maybe to disconnect the camera so uh to to make the bandwidth better maybe we can mm -hmm. try that what do you think or maybe I can disable the yes. Envision, but uh, I think it will be uh, at least for now because nothing's happening. In in the I think you will. Uh, okay. Nothing. Nothing is happening in Envision, so Wait. I. Oh, what you're doing? I have disabled my own camera. Okay. Because by this point, people know how I look, so just. Listen to my voice and concentrate. I want this to go as, as flawless as possible at this, uh, right now. You sound perfectly now. Yeah. <laughs> which is fine, uh, which is excellent. And now... Yes, the, needless to say, uh, people uh, of great... Uh, observational skills can know that I am frustrated right now. So uh, let's go to the fun things. I hope that everything will go perfectly. So I wanted you to write down your ideas about what constitutes a game in your opinion. But I believe that when I told you when I told, uh, said this question, what constitutes a game, in your mind, there already were notions. 
So I want to uh, bash these notions with what I've learned from my experience. And you by yourself can uh, take your own uh, considerations about differences. The key elements of a game are as follows here. Goals, rules, challenges, and interactions. There are many activities that have rules and challenges or goals and interactions or any combination of these. But the game is a specific thing that possesses every of these four. And you cannot have a game, like a real game, without these. You can have great fun without these, but it will not be a game. You can have an efficient workplace, but it will not be a game. And why people need to play... I am uh, for the fact that people need to play games everywhere. Like every workplace, every educational space should be gamified as much as possible. It can be done good, bad, whatever, but the goal is to gamify our experience. That is because, as I've stated in my previous uh, slides, I am uh, hailing from a psychological niche that is called um, evolutionary psychology. And there are multiple scientific uh, facts, multiple uh, evidence that we as a species have a tendency to want to have fun all the time, which is very natural. M moments when we are not into playing are moments that we are hurt or we are hungry or we are sleepy, like our basal needs are infringed upon. But any other time, we should be having fun. We should be playing a game. And through these core elements, through these key elements of a game, I will try to show you why and how. What is the meaning of a goal for a person? It is defined in multiple dictionaries as an aim. And what is an aim? An aim is something that we strive towards. Pretty simple, pretty obvious. But also, it is commonly, a goal is commonly defined as a purpose. And this is more important. A purpose is a reason to exist, to do something, to be active. And many people do not have a purpose in life. We all here, I assume, are very driven idealists that want to change the world. But this sometimes... Is I hope it's true. We can barely hear you, Hania. Oh, sorry. What did you say? I'm going to the chat then. Oh, it's a bit better. That this is a very brave assumption that we are in this group. I also believe it. It may be brave assumption, but I like to uh, give everyone uh, a credit of trust. So. There are, however, unending sways of people that are just pushed by their needs without having a purpose. And allowing them to play a game gives them a purpose, even if temporarily. So a person, and I have seen it innumerable, time, innumerable times, where working with people from impoverished areas uh, we just scrape day by day or working with kids or even elderly people that treat themselves for depression and they have general lack of purpose in life general uh, martin wait a second mm -hmm. okay uh, i have a question whether you've heard because uh, uh there was some problems with audio but i think it was uh hearable can you please confirm it in the chat that you've heard everything? 
please come again. I didn't, didn't understand. Okay. Yeah, because there was some problems with your audio. You were like sped up uh, and it was super fast. However, uh, Paulina says that uh, everybody has heard you, so uh, we can go on. Okay. So I have seen it multiple times to, because I'm, as my daily work, I work with kids that uh, have depression or have bulimia or anorexia and uh, like serious stuff. And those uh, people that normally exhibit lack of purpose in life, when they are playing a game, they can at least temporarily get a relief from the burden of existence. And it can, we can actually treat them using games because our brain does not uh, differentiate uh, a simulation from reality. For our brain, if we simulate emotion in a game, it is as real of an emotion as emotion in the situation of a normal life. I don't know if you can see me, but I'm making an... Ah, you cannot see me. I'm making giant air quote, air quote because uh, I do not believe that uh, essentially games are not a part of our normal life, real life. This is, this is reality. This, so the goals are our aims and our purpose. We need to think of that as, uh, as an objective. We, if we make a game, we need to understand how it affects our aims, our as a creator, our as a facilitator, our as a participant, and our purpose, how we realize this. Then what is the meaning of interaction for a person? We'll hop into that in a second, but first, do you have any questions about this part? I cannot hear any, so yes. Um, what is the meaning of an interaction for a person? So it is defined as activity of being and talking to other people and the way that people react to each other. It is very important. Reaction, closeness, and communication. Also, the process by which different things affect each other or change each other. So interactions in the game are both constructed in a way that we interact with each other, with other participants, but also actually in the process of the game, things change. The game is about things that change. In our life, we need to mostly, in our daily life, wait a long time before things change before a sum of our little decisions and choices affects the reality. In game, it is not so. That's why a game is a very handy package in which we can take enormous process and drive it to its conclusion within hours or days if necessary, but not years. I can take a person which does not believe in his or her ability to achieve success and make him play a game during which he or she achieves success. And I can make him stay in this emotion and emulate the effects of this emotion to his daily existence. Because our brain, as I said, does not differentiate simulation from reality. A person that achieves success in in games treats is uh, treats this as a success in the life that's why there are so many people addicted to the uh, games uh, like online games or uh, computer games in general our brains need uh, our brains need emotion that's why many people are binge watching tv series because that simulation of being a part of this narration of this narrative is also an interaction, although one-sided. But if you ever had a hangover from reading a book or watching a movie, 
you already immersed yourself in it you already had an insta interaction and there was already change on its way so interactions are our relation and our change further what is the meaning of a challenge for a person now this is a confusing one because people like to treat challenge as a competition and it is not so a challenge does not inherently uh, possess it can be a competition of course but you do not have to be a rival in order to be challenging someone and it is defined the situation of being for faced with this is in quotes because it's less relevant but uh, Marcy, the can you please repeat it. okay can you please repeat the last sentence so the i'm just talking about the the and the definition here so the situation of being faced with this is less relevant and now the meaning of it something that needs great mental or physical effort in order to be done successfully and therefore tests a person ability a challenge first and foremost should be understood as a validation and this is also something that is missing from daily existence very often validation we as a society are devoid of rituals that validate our strength mental or physical that validate us personally people affiliate themselves to uh, sports teams to sex in the worst possible scenario to political parties they show great need of being a part of something bigger because they need validation and many people that i've worked with that i know lack this moment in their life when someone told them go do this go face this challenge and then you will be a part of us then you will be good enough then you will be accepted as a man or as a woman and again as we create games we are able to give people first of all the rituals of passage a moment when in very condensed straightforward form they may test their medal and see that they are worthy and really people think in these categories or not and if they're not worthy they know where they fail they failed and they can be steered towards success in the next ritual of passage because those are cyclical and those need to be, be reaffirmed and again people that play our game share a bond of experience that's way that's why they affiliate to each other they get closer so also challenge can be interact uh, can be uh, understood as an invitation to compete or take part especially in a game or argument so a challenge is uh, actually invitation not an insult many people inter uh, understand i challenge you it's like something uh something bad challenges come test yourself against me people uh, are very often full of uh, need to uh for example games are excellent in uh, eliminating aggressive behaviors or uh, deeply rooted um, problems, arguments that boil underneath the surface of a group. They can be used to diffuse them because people many times have a problem with the structure of power in a group 
and they are unable to do anything about it, to discuss this in a meaningful way. And game allows for this. So challenges are validation, our validation and our invitation. And then another Leo, that's why I was so happy that we had Leo back then. So what is the meaning of a, of a rule for a person? I have three definitions here because they are all relevant. And except so the base one, the easy one, is an accepted principle of a, or an instruction that states the way things are or should be done and tells you what you are allowed or not allowed to do. This is our paradigm. This is our a rule set of rules consists constitutes our world view. We go through our lives acting on upon rules that were embedded in us the most important and controlling influence on someone a rule is something that rules us rules make us who we are the rules that we adhere to and so if a person is filled with toxic rules that hurt this person or make this person hurt others in the game it is understandable that the game has its rules. So we may take this person and show them different rules. Give them a chance to view a world in a different perspective. And also, so we need this person to, during the game to submit to our rules, which is obvious. If we were to make this person submit to our rules in, again, quote unquote, real life, that person would oppose us. But in a game, how, how are you supposed to play the game if you don't like the rules? You just don't. And it's, it's obvious to our brain that we want to follow the rules in the game. Uh, so it's cons we get consent from this person to show that person a different state of being. And also rules are, this is, this is from a, a dictionary of uh, law terms. Uh, so a period of time during which a particular person or group is in control of a country. Uh, skip the country part. A person of a, or a group is in control. People that have these sets of rules, the rules are there to give them control. And during games, if you work with a group longer, you can craft rules with them. And it's a two-way street. Rules are our consent. We consent to them so that we may be in control in the space that they describe. So rules are our control and our consent. And now again. Okay. I think I think it's a great time to, to make a break for ourselves, maybe just a few minutes, like five minutes or ten. And uh, we'll recap it after the after the break and uh, yes. and move on uh, to some uh, activities. More activities. Yeah, great. Okay, so let's have ten minutes of a break. Uh, so let's meet at twelve thirty-five in ten minutes. Okay. If you have any questions, uh, think about them, and I don't know, place them in the write them in the chat. And after the break, also, we'll find time to answer any of your questions. Now, what will happen? The fast recap. I will just remind, remind you that goals, all about aim and purpose, interactions, all about relation and change, rules are all about consent and control, and challenges are all about validation and invitation. So now, what we will do, I will try to make this workshop as much gamified as humanly possible in the confines of the cybernetical space. So you will always be given rules of what we're doing. You will always be given aims. Your challenges will be stated and interactions will be made perfectly balanced as all things should be. I feel pretty much like Thanos right now. I have promised you discussion in the uh, description of this workshop. So now assemble in your teams. And we will proceed to this discussion. What will be the goals? Integrate you in your teams. Introduce the core technical elements of a game and personalize your thoughts about them. 
you will be working as a team those are the interactions uh, in a breakout room again that's why we practiced beforehand brainstorming your ideas each and every person's voice will be heard you will be uh, comment uh, you will receive a comment uh, and you will comment each other's work sorry and the challenges working under pressure of time and we will be very tight on this one working with unfamiliar group of people and working under pressure of potential criticism and those are the rules they will be reminded later on but first i will just go through them so that you might familiarize yourself with you will start with 100 points as a group each team will have eight minutes to prepare their subject failing to report in time equals minus 30 points so after eight minutes you will have to report on your on our common platform that you are already back you will do it by making a drawing on your uh, envision platform you will give us a sign by drawing i don't know a star a skull whatever you wish in the area of your group each team uh needs to have those three strong talking points what do i mean by strong talking points arguments that you are able to defend if necessary they are supported by concept by evidence by uh thought out material and lack of prepared talking point equals minus uh 20 uh, points for every talking point missing each team will have two minutes and i will use a stopwatch to present them all you will be speaking to us all team will be visible on their cameras and every person and team must speak during the presentation that's what the, that's why i told you to be in four people four men teams because therefore you will have uh you would have easier time but i think you will handle anyways so you will speak for two minutes every person will have to take their voice during this two minutes period speaking about those three talking points and how you divide it is up to you after each presentation other team have collectively three minutes to find weak spots in their arguments so you then will people person that wants wishes to uh take voice will tell us i'm from the team one two four three whatever and i have a problem with what you said and it's that every weak spot noticed equals plus five points for the team that noticed so you will you will be uh, gratified for actively considering what people are saying and trying to find something that is not quite perfect uh, excuse me for a second uh yeah we'll uh in the moment uh repeat the talking points and uh please martin can you provide an example at the uh, at the end of the rule explanation is that possible yes yes uh, before we start the game i will give you an example of a talking point okay is it okay Lukas? yeah i believe so yeah great uh the subject for your discussion after we part our ways with porn at Ned Stark, uh, I will have to briefly go through uh, some information. Please try to focus on these information as they will be relevant for your discussion. I will not be uh, talking about that in details as we're short on time. I will just try to give you an outline. So. Technically, every game consists of these. You should treat them as tools. So participants, area, narrative, meta mechanics, mechanics, facilitators, slash dash stuff. So wait, uh, I will in the end give you an example how to read games in this lens. Participants, all these things that you see right now, which I will not go in details right now, are need to be taken in consideration if you want to make a game that actually works there is no way to omit 
any of these. You might get lucky. You might uh, make them in the most brief way possible so you know the basic outline. But for this to be a tool for social change, for change in general, you need these. You need to know for who you are, what your target audience, what they're expecting, what they need, because otherwise they will be just not engaged. And if they are not engaged, you failed. Then area, even a table is an area. As in regards to the online activities, platforms on which you uh, enact your game are your area. So you need to know it as best as you can because 70% of things that fail within a game are linked to misrecognition of the area, lack of understanding of how it works and what are its resources, accessibility, uh, and even emotional load. What do I mean by that? Uh, well, uh, imagine if I try to create a game on a cemetery. There are cultural norms how one acts on a cemetery. And if I disregard that, people acting in this game would be already at disadvantage because they would either have to submit to the rules of the game or submit to the rules of society. And that would create unnecessary strain on their emotions. Uh, although maybe I want to have this strain, but then I recognize this. Never mind. S narrative. Narrative will have its own section, uh, but as a uh, as a general thing, it is the thing that drives, draws our people into our game. Then, meta mechanics. What are those? This is the comprehensive and complete list of meta mechanics. There are no more. Uh, those are rules that govern other rules. And every single game has at least one of these. Those set perspective. You don't have to bother with them right now. That much. Mechanics are basically the rules. Well, this is what we think of as it's a mix basically of rules and challenges. And we need to know how we want to implement them and what we need to implement exactly. What for what purpose? What the, what do they do? Now Facilitators and staff are very similar to the participants because you need to know who you work with and how do they work. And even if you are the only facilitator, you need to at least partially know yourself uh, in regards to your um, comfort, uh, comfort area and how you want to work it. And most importantly, can they handle the job? If they don't, if you know, just don't do it. And now the part, the reminder, and now we go into the final thing and it leads straight to our discussion. If you don't do it in an engaging way, if you don't have this notion that what you're going to do will be awesome and cool, you may be mistaken, but you, if you're not convinced that this is good, don't do it. You need to, uh, be yourself engaged into this game that you want to play because your engagement is also a part of the success of this activity. So you do not want to make those games a chore. I remember, I remind you the rules of our activity. Now, Zoran has a question. Yes. Uh, uh, he's asking, it's like a month of research, right? Please re repeat the question. The, the question is, it's like a month of research, like... Uh, yes, of course, even more. Uh, that's why games are especially effective if you really uh, work with a group 
or with uh, nationality or with uh, local area for a long time. If you make a cycle of them and you make a first game that um, opens up information for you, gives you information, like you probe the situation, and then you work, uh, build upon it. Uh, it is a subject of study of its own. I could make an entire workshop consisting of even more hours than we have right now, based uh, around any single of these points. Like on every single of these points, there is a few hours of speech uh, constant, like nonstop of my of my lecture and a series of workshop how to best use these. So uh, I hope I answered the question. Yes, and something else. No. Oh, yeah, my, my microphone was off. Yeah, the there is also a question uh, that who are facilitators uh, in this case? Facilitators. I, when I say facilitator, I mean a person that organizes the game, that uh, is invested in the project uh, of uh, of the of which this game is a part of, and. It may not be like the, the one person that is the brain of entire uh, operation. It might be a group of people that divide work among themselves. And uh, also, I consider them uh, a bit different from the staff because a staff member is a person that was took to this game just to conduct it. It doesn't have to understand the whole picture. Facilitator can play as an NPC in this game, can be a part of a, a point, an interaction, can be an, a referee in the game, can be a part of this game. So a facilitator may uh, work as a staff during the game, but the facilitator has a broader overview. And that's why I generally recommend that people that actually conduct the games are all facilitators, all involved into the project, because it's easier then to meet after the game and share experience and drive conclusions out of them. I yeah, it's like Joan said uh, that it's it's like a game master. If you if you have played uh, Dungeons and Dragons or anything like that, it's like a game master exactly. Yep. And a game can have few game masters because sometimes games have a broad space that needs to be covered. Another question, maybe? No. So we go on. These are... There is a question uh, Pepe asks. Uh, for eight minutes, we have to propose a game with uh, all these components or just to propose an idea who will be targeted, uh, like which who will be the target group? Nope. I will explain it right now. OK. So now the discussion is about, based on your life experience and theoretical background provided, so the points I was talking about previously. I want you to prepare talking points. How, knowing that the game is consistent of these parts, can you utilize the awesomeness of the games in regards to use upon a uh, you as a facilitator, how you can have fun during the game? Can you make a mecha mechanic that is especially fun for you? Can you make a narration that is uh, extremely Mm, engaging for you but then participants maybe they are uh, especially fond of this activity or that and we can forge it into mechanic or there is a an area that is very important to them and we can make it awesome for them local community or your professional field professional field of work how can you make a game awesome for your general associates, how you can show that it is awesome. We have four subjects. How many groups actually do we have, Łukasz? We have three groups. Dobrze, to w takim razie. Uh, we will take three uh, first subjects and the group uh, first group will receive, uh, we have groups one, two and four, yes? One, three, and four. One, three, and four. So group one, facilitators, uh, group three, participants, and group four, local community. And now 
I give you an example. So you will have to make three talking points about this. I will give you an example. Use practice, practical and specific examples. So what do I mean? I will take local community, for example. I know that I, it is example from my uh, own uh, work. I know that local parents are extremely overburdened with work and they themselves do not have time to take their children far away from their uh, local area. That's why I, as a, um, as a social worker, received uh, permits from the, uh, from the parents of the children and organized a trip for their kids uh, to the large forest in which I made a game. And what was the fun factor of it is that I knew at what time parents were finishing their work. So the game ended nearer to where we started, nearer to their uh, place of, uh, of accommodation. And I made parents join the last part of the game so that even though children were playing for six hours, at the last half an hour, their parents were able to get from work and have fun with their kids at least for this little while. So I used meta mechanics and mechanics uh, and also knowledge of the area to make it happen. I used the knowledge of my participants, knowledge of the community, and I allowed them to have fun together for at least a while. And for the kids, it was extremely important that they could do something with their parents. Is it specific enough? Have I, have I given you an example? I hope so. Okay. Uh I have a question, and there are some questions uh, from uh, from our uh, participants. So, first thing, uh, the thing that you just said is an example of a talking point, right? Yes. It's a talking point that game uh, is especially good in in was especially good in your case because you were able to uh, achieve uh, your goal and help your local community, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So. Uh, do we have to, like, when when uh, participants will discuss it in the groups, uh, do they have to just point uh, one thing that, for example, uh, the mechanic or my knowledge of a, of a group uh, is especially, I don't know, helpful in here? Or uh, is it necessary to cover all of the aspects of the game? Try to, in every talking point, cover most of the aspects as many aspects as possible. You want to create a situation in which you show others how you can use a lot of these aspects, as many of, as many of you under, uh, as many as you understand at this point, for the awesome factor, for the factor of making it extremely cool for everyone. So for the facilitator, for the participants or for local community. Okay, and there's also a question from Paulina. Do we assume that local community are locals who do not participate direct, directly in the game? An example would describe how we affect them indirectly by conducting our game. Of course, this is also okay. If you want to drive your local community into the game, cool. If you just by doing a game in your local community, in the area of your local community, affect them in a positive way, cool as well. Both of them are awesome. Okay, so game about planting flowers Excellent. in your neighborhood. Absolutely. It still counts. Yes, absolutely beautiful. Okay, so do you have any questions about the rules of this game? I will go back to the rules again. Okay. Fernanda is asking, so the objective is to create a game from the perspective of a group, facilitators, participants, local community. Not sure I didn't understand the objective. Okay, so I will reiterate it. I want you to... Imagine a situation in which knowing what you know at this point of a game, it, it doesn't, you don't have to make a real case scenario as I did. 
It doesn't even have to work. That's why people will give weak points later on. But I want you to imagine a scenario in which using these things, you can make a game awesome for facilitators, participants, local community. Using the knowledge of participants, area, narrative, mechanics, facilitators, and stuff, you can give them joy and make good things for them. It, do it doesn't have to be real, but I want it to have as many ideas. I will give you more ideas if you want, like more examples. Facilitators. I know that one of the facilitators has birthday on the day of the game. So I create a game in such a way that unbeknownst to this person, one of the point is fe features uh, him as a center point and participants singing happy birthday to you. Okay, so, so it's just about imagining a case where a game would be especially appropriate tool, right? Yes. Okay. Using all these things or as many things as possible, okay? Okay, do you have any questions? Fernanda, it's good that you asked the questions. I still don't get it exactly. So, okay, so I assume that we all have it. Let the raccoon guide you and let the games begin. You have eight minutes from this point. I uh, activate a stopwatch in 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, ignition. Okay, John is asking about which session is group one. It's called when you click on the sessions uh, button on the left, you will see the list of all sessions. It's called, uh, wait a second, until it loads up. It's called online breakout one. Oh, my microphone was muted. If any, anybody is still here and uh, is in one of the groups, uh, please go to your groups and discuss these talking points uh, about how you can utilize a game uh, in a specific case uh, when the game would be especially good. And uh, the breakout rooms are when you click on the sessions on the left and then choose appropriate session for group number one. It would be online breakout one for group number three, online breakout three. And for online breakout, uh, or group number four, it's online breakout four. I can see that most of you should be in place, but in case somebody is still here, just go to the sessions and, and discuss with uh, your colleagues from the groups. We are here back at 10 past one, so in four minutes. OK, uh, I think it's. Time is up. I don't know, Martin, how your uh, timer, uh, what your timer, timer is saying. I think... Uh, I have uh, 19 seconds, 18, 17, 14, okay. 15, 15, 14. I'll go to, I'll go to breakout. Mm -hmm. Yes, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. And I want to see indicators of your presence r drawn on your board near your group. Draw something if you're present. Anything. Anything at all suffice. So 10. Nine, eight, seven, six, okay, so I uh, have information that participants has not yet arrived. 
Therefore, Wukash, we can subtract a given amount of points from every uh, every of their sum total. From every group. Uh, unfortunately, a bit too late, but I love you still. Like, I will give you a heart. Okay, I'm back. Too late, but you also receive a heart, although you lost your points. Okay, so now let us begin. We are now, I will give you my screen again. Mm -hmm. uh, so we'll just describe what happened. Unfortunately, uh, the time was up and uh, nobody was yep. exactly on time. So everybody yes. has minus 30 points. True. And there were uh, already some time uh, of, uh, of leeway from my part, uh, for my part. So now we are at the summary of the game. Oh, no, let's be at the raccoon, because we have not yet done everything uh, to the end. OK, now, I would like to know which group starts first, wishes to start first. Just write in the chat. Group, OK. Uh, Katarzyna said she can start, uh, but in, in which group are you? Three. Okay, so group number three uh, starts. Mm -hmm. Group number three starts. So I would, I want to see everyone. So please show yourself. Hello. Hello. Hi. It's nice to hear, hear your voice. Um, it is su such a relief for me to know that there are uh, actually living beings on the other side. <laughs> yes, still living and in 3D uh, with some sounds. So uh, we had... Um, excuse um, me, excuse me yeah. there's only three of you? Okay, okay so okay. what you can do is you can uh, draw something. If you are unable to connect or to speak, you can draw something on your uh, group's board or make notes on your group's board. Just your activity is what we are going for, not technicalities. So please carry on. Okay, so uh, we um, our task was to describe uh, participants and uh, our participants was uh, a group of um, teenagers, uh, victims of uh, bullying. Um, and um, something about uh, their predisposition, motivation, and so on. Um, mm -hmm. um, they don't know how to overcome uh, the situation between uh, uh, their uh, friends uh, at school. Mm -hmm. um, they um, they want to um, have a result uh, that they train their skills of being being more self-confident um but they are also um not um um they want they don't want to claim that they're victims so um they don't want to be treated as a um as a poor um children after some um difficult experience so we will um, hide this uh, therapeutic um, uh, impact uh, in a cooperative uh, game um, where um, they will um, they need to um, uh, make some task like in among us or something like that and um, that it, it, it will be um, given uh, them um, this uh, this this joy of uh, having an, an adventure with positive challenges um, um, with uh, the, the 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 power and the um, 
this experience of uh, sharing responsibility. So they are not alone. They have their own little task, but they um, they they uh, reclaim the, the power of being uh, uh, independent and uh, um, that they are owners of their own situation um, mm -hmm. with uh, with collaboration with other players. Beautiful. Ten seconds. Okay. Left. I can greet my grandma. <laughs> uh, okay, so that's all. Yes. Yes. So if I uh, if I understood correctly, um, your talking point here is could you could you reiterate in like one 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 sentence one point this 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 this, this situation some of you if i may yeah please uh, yeah so this is the game and i sorry and i challenge game for a cooperative or for uh, guys who are victims of bullying but mm -hmm. we are not fixing this problem out i mean we are not saying uh, you're victims let's play a game if this is an adventure when everyone uh, with uh, can uh, is able to make an effort to reach the goal. There is the common goal for a team. Perfect. But each one can make uh, one step to make uh, like this uh, their team to reach the goal. Okay, so this I, I see actually two talking points here, uh, and I will based on your uh, activity, I am able to show others how to think about about the game because that's why this challenge is about. What this challenge is about there are two strong points here first the game for people that are bullied in which they are not treated as victims it's immense this is this in itself is a talking point and the other thing cooperation together achieving goals together they may show their strength they are not you can treat their you can give them feeling of empowerment by collective action so these are two talking points uh, two talking points uh i have i want to i need to see if there's a like okay <laughs> that's 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 nice so that's that's the contribution here why uh, could you uh, peppa add something to this because I need all the people in the group to activate themselves. Um, I did it to, to, to train and to, to, to ensure the safety of these people, to, to train there and to, to get new knowledge and new experience. Uh-huh. Okay. What kind of experience, actually, would you want to give them? To experiment with the new content, something can... Uh -huh their something new for their behavior new understanding and the practicing actually this is perfect but i need it to be as specific as possible so what in specific would you like to give there what new content what what exactly would it be for example how they can struggle with the similar situation in their real life mm -hmm. Uh, more specific i mean by by specific i mean do i take them to the shooting range and give them the ability to feel the power of the kick of the gun or do i take them to a krav maga curse so they can you you, you understand these are the specifics i want specific example of experience for them you can help yourself each other and specific we can give them quiz and to choose the right answer and if they're the, if the answer is correct, uh -huh. uh, they can uh, they will be the winner. But the uh -huh. idea is exactly to uh, to be faced with the real situation and to try with the different uh, escapes of the situation. Different approaches. Okay. I yeah. What I have shown you just now for the other teams is how to be picky, how to undermine the talking point. Uh, I've shown others right now how I imagine trying to look for weaknesses. Uh, do you understand? 
Yes. So yeah, there is also Levan is adding uh, that a real time multiplayer open world game where they mm -hmm. will see a bullying event occur and have an option to intervene or not. Perfect. Excellent. That that's an extremely concrete and specific example, and I go with it. Do I judge it if it's sensible or not? No. I judge the specifics because what we are trying to do is think specific about the situation. Thank you very much. You have all been activated, even though I have to push you a little bit, but it works just fine. Uh, so there were two talking points in the, uh, like re introduced in the, the speaking area of, um, of 20 of two minutes. So minus minus only 20 points. Yes. Do, do I remember my rules correctly? Yes, it's minus 20 for so every one. Now you are set at 50 points, which is pretty, pretty neat. Pretty, pretty okay. I would like to uh now I activate my 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 uh digital hourglass and uh three minutes for other people to be picky as they can. Please, a person that speaks, activate your camera and voice. Here we go. You have three minutes, so it's until 13.27. Cool. If, if you need to discuss it, you can also switch to a different session, but it may be tight in terms of time. 20 seconds have gone by. I can remember you that every week spot noticed is plus five points for the team that noticed. So it's profitable to be picky. I will make it even more profitable. It's every point noticed is plus 10, 20 points. Let's, let's be generous. Twenty points. I will give you twenty points for being picky. Come on. Twenty-five points. Minute has gone by. I will give you the talking points again. Treating people that are victims not as victims is the first idea, and giving them collective opportunity to overcome their problems. What can go wrong about that? What is not specific enough? No, you cannot criticize idea. Can we criticize no. our own no. idea? Um, I don't know if wrong, just more specific. Maybe if you, um, how do you uh, make this group? How do you find these people and, and make them identify as somebody that should do this? if you don't uh, address what they have in common, maybe that is this victim uh, status. That's, that's actually a very good criticism. They already know that they are victims. That if, they were, if someone is bullied, they have this victim mentality embedded in them. So it is required not only to not notice the fact that they are victims, they need to be given different identity by narrative. So you need to, first you create a group, as you said, we need to know that the, for example, we go to a person and look for uh, people that they were, were bullied and then we make a group as you, as you stated, mm -hmm. but then we need to create in a narrative, different identity for them. Give them, for example, now you struggle not with other people, but for example, uh, space exploration you are fighting not against bullies but space exploration and we go from that i can under uh, i can give you more examples later on please uh, you receive 20 points for your team from which team you are uh, number one number one perfect mondo uh, one minute left because i have stopped my stopwatch uh levani was asking can we criticize our own idea no 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 if you have criticism about your own idea that's just just fine you will have opportunity for others so 30 seconds anybody Comption. Twenty seconds. 
I am really, really, really in need to see your faces and hear your voice. That's how I make this awesome for me, myself. 10 seconds, I will stop the timer. Yes. You are the next group. Okay, that's enough. So let's go to the group number four. I want to see you, I want to hear you. Hi, everyone. Hello. 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 More. I need more people. We had one more person working with us in the group. Uh huh. Hello. Hello. Great. So that's all. You're Thanks. so wonderful. It's so, such such a pleasure to see you. So now, uh, two minutes. Okay. We start now. Okay, great. So our game is going to be focusing on secondary school students. Um, and it will be focusing on the issue of uh, social isolation during a pandemic. Um, and uh, our aim is actually to help elderly to reduce the isolation. Mm. Um, and we've seen during the pandemic the examples of social solidarity, and we feel that there is appetite for young people to get more involved. Um, and uh, also we saw examples when youth were interacting with elderly people, especially with uh, the former um, uh, elderly people who worked in Warsaw Uprising, sharing their stories and learning from this. So we want to leverage that. And uh, basically we want to have a um, locally based challenge for areas that are in kind of yellow zone at the moment. And uh, these would be uh, smaller towns, up to 30,000 um, inhabitants, where you kind of know everyone more or less in the town. Um, and uh, it would be easier for you to reach out to um, elderly. Mm -hmm. um, and the, the aim actually is going to be get the elderly online. And Valitza is going to tell you a bit more about this, how it's going to work. Great. Okay, I want to share about the narrative. Mm -hmm. uh, of the um, mm -hmm. of the online game, uh, we will pre uh, the narrative will be that there is a catastrophe coming, and all the uh, students need to take as much elderly people to go online as possible. Mm -hmm. They will have one week to do this, and uh, they will get points uh, for each person. But there will be rules not to get. Um, uh, relatives uh, like mm -hmm. uh, you should uh, get uh, online people which uh, you don't know mm -hmm. and uh, they will get them to the zoom platform where there will be created uh, specific chat rooms for different topics in which uh, elderly people are interested in like um, uh, gardening like painting or uh, different different topics or they can create themselves uh, topics um, uh, so for something else, so uh, that's for now, maybe Theodora can conclude. Yeah, so we believe because there's generally a loneliness epidemic uh, when it comes to elderly people and specifically now with the pandemic, we believe that this is something which has been made even worse. Uh, we think that using this game is actually going to be a nice thing to uh, counter ageism to have these kids actually befriend these elderly people which can then in turn communicate with them but also communicate with other older people in their communities and share like their life stories and their passions and such so we think that using this kind of a game uh, would actually help them even connect more maybe in real life so maybe if someone like can't get their groceries or wherever now it's going to be way easier for them to find someone who would volunteer to do something like that for them. great Great. You're, you were a minute uh, above the time limit, but I wanted to hear you till the end and it was perfect. Great. So let's iterate. Let's reiterate this. Your talking points are, if I understood correctly, first, we take young kids to associate with elderly people in these difficult times. We counter ages by making them go uh actually get a relationship and from this game that they just get points and they are instigated by the points to get to know them uh, they maybe develop later relationship yes 
if I understood correctly. Yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. And the third thing is that we will use uh, knowledge of these old people in the game so that they can tell stories of their own. Yes. This is excellent, excellent work. Excellent work, really. So you made it quite in time. Let's not be picky. And these are really three strong things here. Plus, you have all activated. And now I uh, attribute plus, uh, plus 30 points for you. You receive plus 30 points due to the fact how correctly this uh, assignment was realized by you. I hope you're happy. Now, yeah. <laughs> now, 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 now I activate my, activate my, uh, I would like all of you on the workshop to notice the fact that even though the rules were stated beforehand, I just made up two new rules. First new rule that I made up is that I given you points for efficiency. And the second that I made up earlier is that I have lifted the point limit for being picky to stimulate activity. I now lift the limit to being picky up to 25 points right now. Uh, uh, okay, so uh, again, uh, now... Uh, there is a... Uh, Fernanda says, I'm an observer in a team one. Mm -hmm. can share audio or video and she loves the idea uh, and would challenge a bit the rewards for the youth and mm -hmm. uh, i think you can challenge it uh, in chat if you can't join with video okay so i see uh, rewards for the elderly but maybe not so clear for the youth mm -hmm. not uh, okay that's 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 a great uh, you're from team one uh, team four you cannot get points for your own <laughs> team. Uh, Fernanda is team one. Give this, give this, uh, this lady points. Give, give her a point. Give, give her, give her uh, like uh, twenty-five points. Team one receives twenty-five points because this is a great, great point. You need to really make it clear how young kids would benefit, but it's not how you perceive their benefit because it's obvious to us. But mm. you need to. Uh, give them incentive. Speak in their terms. So that's that's great. Anything else? We have still a minute. Zoran, by the way, I will uh, address your 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 uh, thing later on because I will debrief you. That, uh, why don't you just show your face and say it? Okay. Uh, who will moderate the meetings? Excellent again. Who will be keeping watch over this? Because it looks like it's spread all over the place. Uh, and who will pass the tech level? That's again. Uh, Katarzyna, uh, from, from where you are? Uh, Katarzyna was uh, in the first group, I think, uh, in the group number three. Uh, number three. Yeah. Group number three. But this is this group. Yes, no? Yeah, no, this is group number four. Okay, so give their points, 25, tw even 50. Even 50? Even 50, because there are two points. Who will moderate the meetings and who will pass the tech level to the older people? And uh, Diana, uh, how can we make sure that uh, there is a follow-up? It's a great point, 25 points, but Diana, you're from? First team? Aha, uh -huh, exactly. Perfect. Perfect. Now, uh, Wukash, there is a problem. I, I need to make a uh, note here. The mm -hmm. Ladies in the second meeting have a problem, like a serious one. Could you please okay. find them and address this issue? Because it's impossible for me right now. Uh, okay, team one. Uh, so time's up. There we have our points. Uh, now let's get to the last last uh, team last group hello i don't know if my mic and audio will work but i will support my teammates if they need 
It yeah. Was. Okay. So, uh, it, was there anyone else in your challenge in your team? There were two, but one of them never. We never f met at the. Okay. So so okay. So th th it's called Dead Souls. I have many of them on my Facebook. And, and, and Zoran, there. Zoran, can you can you join us? Uh huh. Still, st still invite me in. Uh, okay, but uh, I don't know. Uh, how can I actually help you right now? Uh, Zoran uh, was with you, so uh, can we hear your voice, Zoran? Something's going on. <laughs> no. Hey, okay. so Zoran, you are there. Uh, please draw something on the board uh, to to <laughs> make your presence known. Uh, <laughs> now, okay, ladies, please carry on. Tell me things. Uh, times uh, times begins now. Stop it begins now. Yes, here's Zoran. Hello. <laughs> Good to see you. Uh, so? So, Deborah, can you start with the idea? Okay. First thing, we need to discuss accessibility because of the internet connection. It's not fair, but we cannot have participants. No, but, uh, and we need lunch break. So <laughs> I want this in the rules. Uh, no, but by the way, um, we uh, discussed um, about the, the role of facilitators. Mm -hmm. There was a suggestion of thinking of to making it entertaining to see the, what are the good things of being a facilitator. Mm -hmm. The fact that you have some sort of uh, power and you know more because you have the broader picture vision, mm -hmm. but you can observe and um, enjoy the journey of the participants without really interfering with it. So okay. you don't really have responsibility with that, but you're like Gandalf in the Lord of the Rings. So you know the bigger pictures, you can give support, which is valuable, and you're really necessary to the, to the story. But mm -hmm. the journey is still the journey of the, um, the participants. So you must take care of supporting them, giving them the safe space, the route they need to go on, but you shouldn't really interfere with their personal uh, view of the game. So we, uh, I don't know if it's a talking point. Yes, though. it is. It it is. Uh, Please carry on. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the the low Go ahead. Yeah. So, um, yeah, we also discussed um, that some participants might, uh, some facilitators might um, uh, feel more, more um, in the or more. Uh, drawn to it if they have also a voice so maybe in discussions they can also have um, like sort of become the same um, semi level in certain parts and and be part of the conversation and also draw from the experience for themselves uh, mm -hmm. for their life okay okay and be like uh, also involved and, and and learn from it yes yes that's, and that's cool and uh, the, our Gandalf, who's not a protagonist, but has gone to another world and became uh, a, a sort of a right. god, mm -hmm. is uh, also increasing uh, maybe his powers as, as the game develops, because he, uh, he knows more and more uh -huh. each, with each game that develops in front of him. Yes. OK. I Zoran, see. Zoran, can you end with a few words? Um, we, can't, we can't hear you. So there's a. There, are you muted? Uh, we cannot hear you, unfortunately. Zoran, we cannot hear you. <laughs> okay. Unfortunately. Okay. Anyways, time's up. Sorry for the situation that you are not able to uh, speak, but uh, I get the point. If I understood correctly, first thing, uh, uh, anyways, you have. Uh, you yourself created a game in my mind. I mean, by listening to, listening to you, I have a very nice idea for a game that would actually work. So, uh, so uh, you are proposing, the first talking point, create a game in which facilitators actually are players in a way, meaning that they ha have objectives of their own. So this is the first talking point. The second is that there is a mechanic in which they or game organizer or a main protagonist became stronger the, the more they understand about the situation and 
to get this, they actually participate in discussions to have their own voice, but they just influence things by by their wisdom, not by their action, which is cool. This is the second one, if I understood correctly. And the third one is that this game is created for the specific facilitators so that they may themselves uh, change something in their life by observing them. So they grow during this game. Did I understood you correctly? Yes. yes. It sounds even yeah, better exactly. when you say yeah. <laughs> I know. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. The game in my mind. Uh -huh. Yes. I okay. Also, Fernanda uh, said, "Collect rewards from players if doing good work." Uh, okay, but Fernanda is from your team. No. Yes. She's an observer. Ah, she's she's observer. okay. Great. Uh, I need to. I, we don't have time for this now, but I have. I, I really have a great idea for a game now. Really, <laughs> uh, perfect. So you made it. You lose none of the to of the points. I also attribute thirty points for the complete uh, achievement of the of the objective. Like you, you made it. And now, please, uh, blah blah blah. <laughs> Mafia sleeps. Mafia is a great game. Anyways. Uh, so you received 30 points, and now I uh, zero my stopwatch. Three, two, one, get picky. Get picky, yeah, yeah, get picky. Uh, yeah, Katarzyna uh, is saying there is no information about the contract, the rules of safe space. Mm -hmm. There is no information about the scope of responsibility, what a facilitator can and cannot uh -huh. do, and how it relates to the participant's performance. OK. That's that's definitely 25 points here. Which is the platform area of the game? Yeah. How are you supposed to do it? Yeah, that's that's 25 points as well. Uh, they need to be taken into consideration. And, and which which group are you? Yeah, all good points. Right, uh, team four. four. Okay. And Katarzyna is in team three. Okay. Uh, and Lemani says, as I understood, the game gets harder as time goes by, so soon it will become unbeatable. Fair point. 25. Something else? You have still 30 seconds. 10, 9, 8, 7. Fraud. I don't know. Ah, yes. Okay. There must be inbuilt mechanic not to be able to manipulate the situation. Absolutely. Yes. 25 points for this man. Okay, so that's up. Thank you. And we did it. You did an exercise, a discussion, but it was a strange discussion in which you weren't actually speaking with each other, but it realized the core element of a discussion. You need to uh, redistribute ideas. Allow it them to flow. Now, uh, you can, uh, as much as I enjoy uh, looking at you, you can uh, disconnect from the, from the camera, uh, if you wish. Now, there, was concern, there were concerns about the food break, like lunch break. Uh, Wukash, how much time do we have it for it? We've planned 45 minutes for a long break uh, for lunch. So uh, the time for us to meet again will be half past two. But wait, I, I not want. I don't want to do it right now. Uh, okay, I'm do, sorry. Do we have still some time to the uh, anticipated because we were about to have one hour, one hour and a half. Uh, actually, uh, it's time for uh, right now. It's time for a lunch break. It's already exactly. time for lunch break. Yeah. Great, not great, but let's go. So. I'm, so, I, I'm sorry, Deborah. Uh, I would love a uh, longer lunch break also, but uh, we can't make it any longer. So let's make a lunch break right now. And uh, we will summarize the game. And I will show you how to understand what I just did in this game uh, after the break. Uh, after the break. Uh, Levani uh, uh, said to add points for group number three. How many? Uh, it's for. 25 for uh, for the fraud, I guess. OK. Sorry it, for not adding that. Right now? Is, it, is it good? Are we good? OK, I guess so. Before the break, 
we had a little uh, tournament, a little game, if you will, because I decided that I needed to show you the internal workings of a game on a game, on a concrete example. And also, I wanted to uh, give you a ground to speak uh, about your ideas and me showing you the advantages and disadvantages of using a game as a tool. Because no tool is uh, universal. So this game, I have created it in such a way as to be flawed, as to be uh, badly designed, or so to speak. Uh, it does possess elements that are uh, a bait, like they, they are there to instigate some motives and actions of players, but it also has one very important flaw. It's intimidating. It is made to be intimidating. Uh, and we are quite used to playing intimidating games because most of the time what people do when trying to gamify a thing, they take a challenge, they consider how to how, how I want uh, people to uh, interact with this, what I want to achieve, and then they slap on this uh, points and time pressures. And that's all there is to it. Because most of, most of this game, that's all I did. There were, however, few points in this game that I highly recommend using. But uh, Zoyan uh, gave a wonderful, wonderful comment here that his kids constantly uh, made up, make up rules during the games and then they fight over it. This is a phenomenon that I would gladly uh, use an entire lecture about, entire workshop about, why it is necessary to make the rules in such a way that you can easily adapt them, adapt them during gameplay, that you are not writing yourself into a corner, but also shifting too many rules creates a situation of unfairness. And I made this very unfair. And although the first group uh, won, uh, like, yes, yes, they won. Uh, they were put in a very uh, awkward spot at the, in the beginning, where not only had they to bear the burden of being the first and uh, potentially receive the most criticism going into hostile ground, I was extremely more lenient later on. Uh, I used them basically as a test example. Mm, but what they did is they adapted to the change. Uh, uh, yes, I, I. Okay. Ah. So. <gasps> oh no. So unfortunately, you were cr you were crushed by by my uh, situation. I'm sorry. Then I I I I did you harm, in a way. I hope not, not great harm, uh, but that's what you want not to do to your participants. Generally, when you must create a situation where people create, uh, like refer their ideas, they must be at up front given a bonus just for sake of being the first, because being a first in anything is important. I uh, made a. A short, uh, like, sorry, I'm missing the word. A fail safe mechanism into this game where initially there were no rules of getting a lot of bonus. Uh, yes, yes, that's totally it. I should be giving you 50 points, and that's that, but I will not, mm, unfortunately, because this is just a test example. Uh, the fail-safe mechanism that I um, embedded in this game was that I, from thin air, gave incredible boosts in points of which there was no previous uh, 
information, which should be done if you feel that your game does not say, uh, does not does it perfect uh, purpose right. But this is, like I said, a, a matter for a different lecture completely. Uh, but I just wanted the point I wanted to make is pressure of time is good, but pressure of time in this game was outrageous, and it was made not because we have short time for this workshop we do but that's not the point uh the point was that i wanted to show you intentionally to have too few minutes to realize a challenge which is a creative challenge there are two types of challenges ones are executive challenge which you just carry out and you may do it mechanically like, for example, challenges with throwing a ball uh, under pressure of time. And the creative challenge, like prepare for discussion, should never be done in such an immense uh, time pressure. Time pressure at all is good, but not such so great. Therefore, uh, this uh, example of game, I wanted to dissect in extreme detail, but hence we have not... Uh, much time left for our entire uh, entire workshop and i want you to make a game use this game as an anti example of how this thing should be done try to work around those tropes because this game is slap dashed from the most obvious tropes uh, that are there the only thing uh, i recommend is sometimes to make games in which players can lose points it is very uh, discouraging but if you have a well-made group you can achieve discipline uh but the prerequisite is that you know the group you have uh, tight knits with the group and you want them to overcome their limits so that but in a game like the first game i, I meet you for the first time people i should never create a game in which i create this depressive sanction because our brains is always more hurt by loss than is happy by gains there i said it if uh, we have time and i seriously doubt it i will go into more details but i will when you will be doing your games i will try to refer to this game in a way when i will be hovering around your workrooms and now i give voice to Wukash so that he may start an exercise with you. And we do not hear you, Mike. Yeah, I can think so. <laughs> uh, OK, Jean said people quit games fast if this points yes. or experience. Yes. That's why, that's why this mechanics was in here, to show you that it should not be done in exception of very, very, very few uh, situations. But that's a detail. That's a very, very fine detail. So, yes. OK. So uh, when Martin was uh, describing how to prepare for games and what to take into account, like there's numerous things, target group, the area where you will be playing the game, uh, what are your goals, what is the narrative, and so on and so on. There are many different things, mechanics, meta mechanics. Uh, all of that strange uh, sounds strange, and there is a lot of it. And some of you commented that it is months or even years of preparation to make a good game. And this is exactly true. Uh, to make a really good game, it takes you uh, sometimes even months of research and getting to know your target group very, very well. However, mm, we are aware how troublesome and what how, how big is the workload. So we're thinking, is there a way to ease this process and automate some of it? And because of this very reason, we have designed a platform, an application that is uh, specifically for this purpose. It is designed for uh, designed for this to, to help you design good games that will be uh, Mm, appropriate for your players and that will be uh, helping you uh, achieving uh, your goals 
So um, right now I'll share my screen with this uh, platform. Uh, you can see the the first screen of uh, of the of the application. We have this tool that is designed to help you create good games, and uh, we want to give access to that to that platform and make some uh, and and allow you to to prepare games in this this platform. So uh, first, it will be easier for you and faster. Uh, to prepare a game during this workshop. And second thing, you can get accustomed, and if you like it, then we would be more than happy to share this platform with you and, and show you how to make good games easier and faster. So on the main board, um, I'll maybe share uh, my entire browser. Um, wait a second. On the on our envision in our envision in our main uh, our main board below the uh, points and everything you can see that here is the link to the platform. Uh, okay. So, yeah. Sure. Are you going to um, put like to direct all the traffic of participants there now? Because if not, if you are going only to show what's there, I'm the person who will send this after this session, the the email and you know all the things which they need to know about the platform. Oh yeah, like the the information about the platform is a completely different thing. We would love uh, all of you to use this thing, use this tool to create games. So but we'll now just... during this session. During this session, yes. Okay. Okay, so I'm pasting the link in the chat. Uh, you can access also from here. And uh, in the below in our main board, you can see that we have prepared uh, user uh, like accounts for you. You can log in as user from 1 to 20. I think it's enough. Uh, so first, before we jump in right into the platform, I would love you to just write your name, who is user number one and who is user number two because uh, instead if, if two people log in on the same to the same user it can get uh, pretty messy real soon okay and this is uh, I'm asking like all of all of you who who uh, are taking part in the workshop of course to to uh, write your name because there is not enough space for all of us, like for all, all the spectat spectators to enter the platform. So, okay. And as soon as you assign yourself to one of these usernames, you can uh, go onto the platform. Uh, yes, I will sh uh, share the screen in a moment for observers. And as I said, unfortunately, we can't provide access for observers right now because it will be uh, too many of us. Uh, so as soon as, as you've assigned yourself to, to one of these usernames, you can go on and go through this link and log in and, I don't know, take a first look. And in a moment, I will show you around and show how to, uh, how to use it and how easy it is, I hope. Uh as the uh, participant as the participants are uh, assigning right now i will answer a question that was uh, made by fernanda uh, could uh, we i assume apply agile methods when uh, designing games agile methods are an option it's it absolutely depend it depends on what you want to achieve with the game uh, but uh, i usually always have a plan b like the game is optimized for something, but there are a couple of rules that I have prepared up front to be introduced if necessary. This is one thing. And uh, second thing, I always create the game in a way that I make a rule that, uh, for example, environments can change. They can be, so I make myself a doorway because people feel, generally feel, uh, that introducing a new rule during a game usually is rather unfair. S uh, especially if this rule makes someone benefit and someone don't. So that's 
that's important thing but this is a uh, Again, for further discussion, all the games you will be doing now are rather your first uh, crush with the uh, the subject, um, and of course they need need to be elaborated further by your experience and or uh, my like uh, advice because I will be giving them to you. All right. So I hope that most of you. Uh have chosen a username for you we have uh, uh, we have uh, very secret and very complicated passwords it's one to three I can see uh, yeah the password is the same one to three for everybody uh, Zoran you're uh, asking I took number 19 no access to inline I'm not sure what does it mean but if you have chosen user 19 please uh, write your name in here I'll do it for you maybe Okay, so Zoran, your user nineteen. If you if you maybe uh, log out and log in again, it should be all right. So if you have any troubles, let me know. Uh, so this is the desktop for our application. It is a software, uh, not for the rather not for the players. Uh, it is designed specifically for game designers. And uh, we are going to design a very simple game. Uh, you can follow my steps exactly if you want to. Uh, like, look at the shared screen with one eye, with one eye, and with other looking what you are doing. Mm, I'll try to describe everything so that you will be able to uh, do it only just just by listening to my to me. Uh, so uh, if you just want to watch, it's also okay. Uh, however, later our next exercise or next task will be to create games. So uh, I think it's uh, uh, it's good to uh, have a uh, quick cr crash course how to use it to make your life easier. Okay, so I switch at the very top. We have a menu uh, menu bar, and I move to section called My Games, and this is the place where I can start creating a new game. Uh, in this place, uh, I have listed all of the games I have created so far. Uh, there is no many of them. And uh, I'll be making a new game uh, in the upper right uh, corner of this section, My Games. We can see a button, the button New Game. And we enter the game, uh, game editor. It is divided into six steps, and they are uh, according to how the game creation process looks like or how it maybe it should look like uh, and and uh, it accommodates uh, the same principles and the same flow as uh, as of the game designers so we'll just uh, name our game i have an idea for a game uh, for a easy simple educational game about the Slavic culture uh, because we live in Poland and and uh, Polish people are descendants of Slavs. However, we do not know uh, much about our heritage, so I think it's a great topic for a game. Uh, so I also was living uh, next to an old Slav uh, settlement, so it's close to uh, my heart, so this is this is the reason. So uh, this Slavic uh, game. Okay, and the game game description is just educational game, and I'll create this game in English. Mm, we can upload our icon to to make it a bit more I don't know, uh, appealing. So this is uh, this is a photo of uh, of uh, of the old Slav uh, reconstructed settlement. Okay, go on. So every game, uh, when designing games, we should start from the very foundations. And one of the things that Martin said, uh, what is most important in each game is what is a uh, game's goal? We can create a game if we don't know what is its purpose. So first, we'll choose uh, goals for our game. We don't have to think uh, about uh, what might be a goal of a game. We have list of virtually any possible goal listed in here divided into some sections 
So I said that I wanted to create educational games. So I look at work with skills and abilities group and just open it. Uh, it's educational, so probably it should be about gaining knowledge. And here I can see that uh, we can choose different kinds of knowledge and we'll select humanistic knowledge because it's about history. So uh, I have selected it. Uh, here uh, mm, appeared some uh, details about my goal because it's an educational game. I think this is my primary goal and all of the other goals that I want to achieve with this game uh, are not as important in this, as this one. We can also choose what is the focus of this goal, whether we want to address uh, single individuals that are playing our game or maybe we focus on the whole group, like the group as a whole. Uh, and then we have place to, I'm sorry for that, we have place to specify this goal uh, and our goal is uh, learn about Slavic culture. Uh, we can be, of course, much more specific in here. The more specific you are, the easier it is to decide whether uh, this goal is achievable or not. Okay, and I have a few secondary goals that I have in mind. I want also to the players uh, of my game to integrate with each other a bit because they do not know uh, each other and I would love them to make maybe new friends during this, this playthrough. So I look at the group-based work because uh, if you want people to, mm, to, to, to uh, get to know each other better, we have to address their group. Uh, then we have a subcategory focused on the group. And here we can see it's, uh, we can select that we want to integrate the players. Okay, and we want them to, I don't know, maybe uh, get to know each other and know at least their names. All right, and then I want to, uh, there, there is also a secondary my goal of mine that I want. Uh, I want to teach the players to orienteer better in their surrounding. So uh, I will add um, a bit, uh, one more goal in the work with skills and abilities section, self reliance subcategory, and here is orienteering so that they will be better uh, players will uh, learn how to navigate with map. Okay, these are my goals. This is the, these are the things that I want to achieve with my games. So I submit this info. To make things easier, we've prepared some, uh, some things beforehand uh, to, to make this process a bit shorter. So I, I previously have created um, the description of my target group. Uh, it is just youngsters, they are early adolescents, and I have created a group for them. And uh, uh, Levani is asking, can you guys remind me, a password for rage stage, it's one, two, three. It's also in, in vision. No problem. Okay, so I've added this group. You can also uh, create your own groups and describe them uh, so that uh, you will know uh, a bit better with whom you are dealing. Okay, so we are accepting this group. We are choosing a location. I've decided to choose Park Brudnowski. It's a park that is near my uh, near the place where I live, and I know it very well. And it also has very few distinct cool features, which are perfect for creating a game. And the last thing is game setting. So game setting is, uh, if you're gamers, you probably know this term. Uh, it is a, a world that you put uh, mm, that you put your players in. In this case, we are putting them inside the Slavic culture. So I'll choose. We have prepared few uh, game settings ready for you to choose. We can make a game with pirates. Uh, players maybe will be enjoying post-apocalyptic uh, world in their game and and it will make them think about, I don't know, what went wrong with, with the world and what 
brought us to, to this apocalypse. Maybe it's about space, maybe about spies, maybe it's a bit more military oriented, things like that. However, in our case, we'll create this custom narrative setting and we'll call it just Slavs because it's like, it's like medieval ages, but a bit different. Okay. If you uh, if you have played maybe Witcher or so uh, a Netflix series, it's a bit like it's a bit like that. It's, it's a bit this this setting. Okay, so uh, it has the same feeling. So we have the foundations of our game ready. Uh, if you have any questions right now or want me uh, to to pause for a moment, uh, let me know. Uh, if everything is okay, we will move forward. Uh, the name of the tool is Game Changer. It's uh, a part of this project, and uh, oh, Rage is a code name, so I think it's it's best to call it Game Changer. Uh, okay, Levani is asking. Uh, uh, you're asking that you can't log uh, again. Uh, just choose one of the emails, maybe the one that you've chosen previously, and uh, type the password one to three. Uh, if you didn't choose an email for you, you can just select one of the uh, empty ones. Uh, all of them are listed in the Envision in the main board. Okay, is there any question? It looks like no, so I'll move on. Okay, so we have foundations for our game. Our system will now know on what uh, it should suggest to you some solutions and how it should help you in creating a game uh, based on the goals that you selected and the players that you're uh, targeting, the location where are you uh, developing a game. It will uh, suggest you some, uh, some, some specific solutions. So let's go next. Here we have some statistics or maybe characteristics of the game that we are to create. It's a bit of a technical thing. Uh, and uh, Deborah, uh, uh, I maybe try to, to, to uh, log in again to, um, uh, to the Hopin platform and, and maybe it will solve the issue. Uh, I can't think of any more specific. Uh, okay, so uh, the first thing that we can set in here is whether the game uses mobile application or not. Uh, we want to create a very simple game, so we do not want to use mobile uh, application. However, there is design specific uh, mobile application just for the system so that the, we can, uh, when we organize the game, we can communicate with players, we can scan some QR codes and give them tasks and so on and so on. Uh, the next thing is whether the game has different paths. We, uh, we use different uh, paths and create many paths for the game when different players do different uh, things uh, inside the same game. If the players are uh, doing exactly the same, we do not need a multipath game, so we leave it unchecked. And here is the core of our system and the, the brains of it. So uh, we've based the whole idea of a game on 10, uh, 10 stats or 10 uh, characteristics. It's, uh, they're divided into three categories, physical, mental, and intellectual. And we have, uh, accordingly, uh, the emails are in the InVision, uh, on the main board of InVision. Uh, and we have exactly dexterity, stamina, organizational skills, communication, uh, emotional, improvisational, inductive, deductive, or logical thinking, strategic knowledge and memory. And actually, we can use these 10 stats uh, to describe our groups and to describe our goals and to describe our games. So, uh, we uh, 
based on our goals, the system suggested how our game should be challenging in each of these area to help you achieve your goal. Sorry, can I? Uh, hop yeah, in? sure. Uh, I believe that as for the moment that you will be uh, making games, it is important that you know that these stats are in reference to the efficiency of a person or a group, not potential. It's like you do not, uh, it, it doesn't uh, insult someone to give him one point in something because, uh, or, or even zero if you don't know, because the idea is how well this person works in this situation. It's not judging a person, rather, rather what can be expected. And as for organization, uh, there's a significant difference between organization and, uh, gosh, uh, and strategic. Organization is inter inwards, strategic is outwards. Uh, how well person can organize, organize himself or herself. And strategic is how well it can organize, it can actually plan out things outwardly. Like, so yeah, that's not how well a person can organize others uh, if a person has a high organization. Sorry. Yeah, that's it's, it's definitely self-organizational. Uh, okay, so, so moving on, this is uh, calculated on the goals that you have, that we have selected before. We have how the game should be challenging in each of this section to help you achieve your goals. And I think it's a good, uh, to give an example, we have an educational, we have an educational game. So our game should be challenging in the area of knowledge and in the area of memory the most. And you can see that in the, uh, in this, in this values of the stats uh, on the screen. The second thing would take into account how, what are the, the possibilities or what are the, the um, as, as Martin said, uh, what the group is capable of. So if they are, for example, youngsters from a sports school, they are incredibly, I don't know, their stamina and dexterity is probably really high because they are young athletes. So uh, they would be very good in these areas. So if you want to challenge them in these areas, you have to make this game even harder uh, in this area uh, to, to make it uh, challenging for them in the same way. And you can see that if a group is really good at something, then we have this plus icon and the challenge uh, uh, for them in the game should be even bigger. If they are moderate or average, then we do not change the challenge. If they are uh, bad at something or they're not uh, especially I don't know fluent they are not great at strategic thinking or their knowledge is not uh, vast then we should make this challenge a bit easier for them because it will still be challenging in the same way so by taking into account your goals and taking into account what is your target group we have an information how difficult uh, your game should be okay so uh, we'll omit this section for a moment because it's not super important right now. It's rather for organizing game and conducting conducting game than uh, specifically designing. Uh, of course, it's also important, but uh, I don't want to uh, take too much of your time. And this is the most important thing. This is the area where we will be playing our, our game. This is the park that we are aiming to, to use. And here, will be choosing what activities they will be performing inside our game. First, we'll draw a game area. The game area should be well-defined and should have clear boundaries so that the players won't be lost during the game. We have, uh, that's also why we have chosen this park to create this game because it's uh, easy for the players to see uh, where the park starts and when it ends. So uh, they have no doubts uh, what is the, um, what are the boundaries of the game. We just say them, the game takes place inside the park, do not go outside the park, and that's it. It is important from the safety perspective. Okay, on the left side, we can open this drawer where we can see this game stats uh, 
that we are targeting, that we are looking for. Uh, these are the same as on the step before. And this is our goal. Now we add activities to this game to meet these values uh, that are shown in here. So uh, we have two drawers at the bottom. One, with, one is with mechanics chosen for the game. Mechanics are activities performed by the players inside the game. And the second one are the mechanics that we suggest uh, for you to use. OK. The first thing are meta mechanics. Meta mechanics are mechanics that are uh, influencing the game as a whole. They are not specific activity. They are rather rules of the game. You, we can think of them like that. We have a separate drawer for meta mechanics. I know this is the, the fourth drawer right now. Uh, there is many of them. Uh, however, uh, I think it's it, it quickly becomes clear uh, what goes where and how to use it. So in this game, we want the players to find specific locations. And this is one of our rules, that there are locations on the map that players are going to visit. So we drag uh, the locations meta mechanic and place it in the meta mechanics uh, drawer to add it to our game. OK, the next thing is we want them to be divided into squads, because if you want to integrate our players and get to know them each other, we can't, I don't know, put 20 people uh, to run around because they there won't be much interaction between them and it won't be structured. If they are divided into squads, then they have an occasion to talk with each other and uh, perform some tasks and challenges together and get to know each other. So we are adding this squads meta mechanic to, to our game. And the last thing that we want to add is uh, points because we want to, uh, if they solve their uh, uh, their task uh, correctly, they will get points and it will give them the sense of satisfaction and a thing to fight for. Okay, so we have this selected this three meta mechanics. I will close for a moment the suggested mechanics drawer and uh, set some settings for this uh, meta mechanics. When we click on the locations meta mechanic, we can see that we can uh, specify the number of locations. Uh, I think to make this game simple, but not to uh, I don't know to 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 plain, we'll add five locations. Okay, uh, and as you can see, these five locations showed up in our me mechanics drawer. Uh, we can now add some specific activities to each of them um, to create this game. Uh, and inside Squaws mechanic, Meta Mechanic, we can specify that we want three players in each squad because uh, three is optimal uh, to create uh, a relationship between the players. OK. Uh, now uh, I want to add these uh, uh, add activities to, to, the, to the areas, to the, to the locations that we've added. So I open the suggested mechanics drawer again, and I look for mechanics that are good for this game based on our goals and our group and our terrain and our setting. So all of the foundations from the very beginning. Uh, so I think that uh, we will add maybe some puzzle. Or maybe we, I, I look through the, through the mechanics uh, suggested in here and uh, I'll choose uh, uh, appropriate. OK, I think that acting this group performance looks quite good. They can reenact some a uh, historical scene and uh, then it will uh, get uh, they, this will be the way how they learn something about the Slavic culture. Okay, the next thing uh, maybe will be um, I look for the, the puzzles that are uh, especially 
challenging in the knowledge and memory uh, areas. Okay, there is this puzzle Caesar cipher that I can see that is quite hard in terms of knowledge and memory. So we'll add it in the second location. So when the players, the squad arrive at the second location, they will have to solve this puzzle. If they arrive on the on this location number two, they will reenact the scene. Okay, and the last thing that I want to uh, for them to 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 do will be. Uh, I think it might be good for them to uh, maybe do a memory. I think it's a good idea to to solve a memory puzzle. Okay. Can I? Uh, sure. Uh, the same thing is relevant, and we can use Mapper uh, when creating online activity, because uh, when we want to we can upload images not only maps taken from satellites so i can upload for example a flowchart of my social game online uh, and i can assign activities and mechanics and the meta mechanics that i am about to use here so that i have everything clear in my system uh, i found this uh, especially useful uh, while working on my social RPG because uh, it appeared that my uh, structure, narrative structure, uh, became horrendously complex. And it was, ex it was very uh, brightening for me. It was easier for me to assign those points uh, to uh, my imaginative map and uh, locate mechanics that I am gonna i'm gonna use in those areas um, with my uh, players so you can use this both ways it, it's not only for the uh, games that are done in the in the material world yes so that's yeah definitely uh, we're using it also when designing this uh, online rpgs where we uploaded the map of the um, virtual space that the players were uh, were crossing uh, like actually in their imagination however to have a physical map and to locate to 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 put the locations of some events and mechanics it was uh, well it, it this tool was appropriate also in this uh, in this situation okay so um, we've added these activities uh, I think that we can now name our areas uh, our locations. The first one will be just a start, so that the players will know where to start, uh, where to start, and uh, what are the rules. This is the place where the, the the staff will be describing what are the rules of the game. I've selected this as a main location so that we will know how many people we need in this game. Okay, I save it. Save it. Uh, the second one will call. Uh, the same as the activities that they are making. So it is acting. Uh, the this one is called uh, puzzles. The fourth one is a memory location. Oh, I'm sorry. Right, and the last one is the finishing line. One thing uh, I'd uh, like to give here is that you do not have to have one mechanic in one spot. You may have several mechanics on one point, and then in the because it's uh, completely up to you how you will uh, combine these mechanics, and uh, you can uh, si write in the description of a mechanic. How are they actually combined? I found it again extremely helpful, hel helpful and clarifying. So in the one uh, spot, you can drag multiple boxes of mechanics uh, there, and they can uh, combine in a way. Definitely yes. So uh, when you look at the game stats drawer, you can see that there are these. Previously, there weren't any, but now there are these yellow uh, progress bars additionally to the blue ones. 
uh, as you can remember, the blue ones were the target that we are aiming. This is the how the game should be challenging in each of these areas to uh, help you achieve your goals, to, to make it a good game. But the yellow is the challenge that you're giving players by the activities that you have just assigned to this game. As you can see that we are pretty close in the knowledge and memory section, uh, we have uh, created a bigger challenge in each of these, uh, each uh, in every other uh, area. However, it's um, it is just a, it is a suggestion. This is a thing that uh, that uh, maybe you should aim or that that uh, are suggested uh, in this in this game. However, you don't have to be very strict about it. We've created real, really big communicational challenge, uh, much bigger than uh, than we targeted previously. However, if we are going to integrate the players, I think it's not a bad thing actually to have. So uh, I guess we can accept this uh, much bigger challenge uh, that is the effect uh, from our uh, mechanics. Okay, the last thing that I want to do is to add uh, where on the map each of these location is. So the starting point will be here. This is a known spot for meetings in this park. Uh, this is uh, the biggest crossroads in the in the park, and this is when when two people want to meet in the park. It's usually at the crossroads. So it is a thing that I know because I have researched this area, and this is also the reason why it is so important to know the your game area to make your game. Uh, accordingly uh, to how this space is perceived by the players. If you align your game with the perception of the players, the game will be much more impactful. Uh, if you do it otherwise, when you, for example, say that, okay, we meet each other on the, uh, on the playing ground, I think there is at least three playing grounds in the park. So it will be a terrible idea to choose one of them. And nobody is choosing this place for uh, a meetup, so it will be against players' expectations. Okay, so then uh, we'll place um, this acting activity, maybe place it on a, a bit more um, private space, which is a bit harder to, uh, to access. And also it can be uh, used as a, um, as a theatrical scene if you want to. So. Uh, it's great for this purpose. Uh, then maybe some puzzles, uh, this, this Caesar cipher, uh, somewhere in a very uh, mystery place. There is a very mystery tea house in this, in this park. It's somewhere in here. Uh, so we'll place it in here. The memory game will be uh, in the far corner of the, of the, of the park. And uh, the finishing line will be in one of the exits of the park, so maybe it will be in here. All right, so now we have activities, mechanics for our game. We have meta mechanics, which uh, are rules for our game. We can see how our game is challenging for our players. Uh, yeah, there is no uh, ability to drag and drop between some of the drawers. Uh, so uh, if you want to add meta mechanic, it has to land in the meta, meta mechanic drawer. If you are adding mechanic, you, it has to land in this mechanics drawer. Maybe that's the reason, Zoran. And also, it's uh, mm, if you want to remove some mechanic, you just drag it back to the suggested mechanics place. Okay, uh, maybe the one thing to show you that you may want to use it, but it is not always advisable. In the bottom right corner, there is this uh, button show discouraged mechanics. So we have more mechanics prepared, but some of them are discouraged for your game. If these mechanics are too hard for the players, are not appropriate for your goals and so on, uh, they will show in this discard section so that you won't feel temptation to use it 
uh, but only uh, only if you know what you are doing, uh, uh, I suggest to take a look in there and and choose maybe from here. Okay, so you will also find, if I may, yeah, sure, that there are discrepancies in the uh, power of a mechan mechanic. There are some mechanics that are clearly very challenging, and there are some that are pretty basic and ready to use. So that is also uh, a fact that we have divided them uh, so as to avoid later confusion. Uh, but uh, sometimes you may want to test the limits of your group by giving a really, really challenging mechanic uh, in some fashion because their power, quote unquote, adds up uh, for the record of the uh, finish, uh, um, like, uh, end game result of your uh, difficulty of your game. Yes, so that's that. OK, so actually, this is most of it. Uh, I hope you do not feel overwhelmed. Uh, if you have any questions, drop them, and, and I'll answer them. Of course, this is not the end of the game creation process. Uh, I'll just go blazingly fast through them. Uh, this is actually, uh, at this time, we have almost our whole game designed. The thing that is left is the narrative, the story of our game. Uh, will we see the game in action somehow? Unfortunately, uh, we can't play the game. Uh, we won't, uh, won't have time to, to go to the Brudnowski Park and play this game uh, or any other because uh, actually game uh, is a bit time consuming experience. So uh, not, not this time. So we just can. Uh, mm, write an introduction to our story. So I don't know, maybe players. Uh, Wait, but maybe uh, it's relevant for Fernanda question. Uh, the game in action is, you can see my online game as a spectator uh, next week, basically at the same time. Uh, people will be playing into in the online game. Mm -hmm. Yes, that, that, was, that was specifically created for this uh for this situation that we are in so yes i don't know if that's what you were asking for okay ah, this game what uh, but what what Wukash is doing right now is a game created online but to be playing offline uh, yes god damn it you, you you you're you're doing it right yes everything is clear Sorry, I, I misunderstood. misunderstood. Yeah, 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 Fernanda, yeah, exactly. It is created online to be played offline. Uh, this game, uh, because it's it, it was much easier to to make a very simple uh, offline game. So this is our uh, this is our uh, example. And uh, the last thing is assigning narrative to make things easier. Uh, we uh, we can describe uh, what is going on in each of the place, like on in each uh, location where the game is. Also, we add uh, a quick I don't know checkup or tool for checking whether your uh, narrative is interesting or not. So we have um, these five uh, places where something can happen narrative wise. And we can choose from a list of these narrative archetypes or narrative basic building blocks that will help you uh, decide what's going on in a nutshell. For example, at the very beginning, the players can meet their mentor that will explain them uh, how what is the world and and introduce it to themselves. Or maybe they should mm, we should call it just exposition because it's the exposition. Mm, of the world presented. Uh, okay, next, when they are uh, reenacting something, maybe they uh, they rescue somebody by uh, making uh, this, this scene that they reenact. Uh, when they solve a puzzle, maybe it's a rival that, uh, I don't know, put some... Uh, some obstacle in front of them, or maybe it's dueling with them and they have to solve a puzzle to fight him. Then there is this memory uh, memory uh, game, and we can call it uh, 
uh, I don't know, maybe maybe we can choose something like there is a mentor that is uh, giving them some in crucial information uh, how to uh, finish the game and be um, victorious. And at the very end, they are triumphing because they have completed uh, all of the challenges and they uh, finished um, the like the whole um, puzzle reel or the whole narrative. So, for example, it can help us if we have a ready, uh, ready story and we assign these plus plot elements, we can work the other way. When we assign to the, to the ready narrative, uh, ready, already written narrative, we assign these plot elements, we can find out that uh, somehow we created only, uh, only rivals and uh, uh, Fernanda, this, uh, yes, yes, this, this exact game has to be played offline. However, you can perfectly uh, design online games as well. There is no difference actually in designing, like in using this tool when designing games for offline and the online uh, experiences. You have to just take into account some uh, changes like uh, the area, especially the area where the game is played. Um, so you can sometimes check up whether your uh, plot is interesting because when you uh, see that you only meet a rival and fight with him, then it becomes pretty repetitive and redundant and maybe boring for our players. So when we accept it, there is the last thing. It is like a summary. We can look at our map and download it. Uh, we can look the, at the summary of our story. We can look at the some uh, summary of our locations, where they are exactly in the uh, geographical um, terms, what are their descriptions, and so on and so on. If we have any QR uh, codes, then they are uh, shown in here. You can add some checklists, for example, remember, remember to take uh, to take some uh, clothes for uh, for uh, characters. If you need anything for the game, you can type it in here, not to forget it when the game starts. And some suggestions for organizer when you're designing a game that some other people will be playing, you can add suggestion, do uh, do not give knives, I don't know, knives to players. It's always a bad idea. Okay, and this is it. We have finished creating our game. And now we can use all of this info to uh, guide us uh, when we'll be playing the game and organizing the game. So I give my voice back to Martin. Or oh, maybe you have any questions, I'm sorry. If you have any questions, just ask them or uh, answer them and we'll move on uh, with the next task. If there will be any questions, uh, we will uh, refer to them. Uh, but now, uh... I'd like to clarify that uh, this uh, tool has one major uh, advantage, meaning that you can create a game and move it to the general repository. To to the you can share it with someone, uh, giving him, for example, if there are two people working with some group, one person can make a game for the other one, uh, and those games that you did previously uh, you do not lose meaning you can evaluate uh, how they went you can tweak them a little bit change things you don't have to start all over again and having things uh, organized in this matter uh, guides your creative process and okay question how to apply mechanics to selected location okay to whole area okay so uh, when you mm, have a game, uh, I'm sorry, it's mechanics uh, stage, you have to add locations meta mechanics first, and then you have to set the numbers, how many locations do you have? Uh, Jean, thank you, thank you for saying that is a great tool. <laughs> uh, 
It is a part of the project and will give you after the workshop all the information about accessing the platform and so on. Uh, we don't want to, to take this time right now, but uh, you will be able to use it and, and uh, there is possibility to access it, no problem. Okay, so we have this, uh, when you have uh, meta mechanic locations added and then the number of location is set to something, for example, in this example, it's five. Then in the mechanics sections, you will see five rectangles corresponding the, uh, to these locations. And when you drag and drop mechanics into these sections, they will be associated with the specific, uh, specific location, not the whole game area. Okay, uh, Anastasia, is it, uh, mm, do you know uh, now how to apply mechanics to select locations? What is okay, a wonderful. paper challenge? Hmm? What is, because uh, it's, uh, there's this comment by uh, Zhao, yes? That's mm -hmm. uh, it's like creating a mm -hmm. petty paper challenge. I don't know what is petty paper. Can I have no idea either. That's it. You, you have uh, you have my attention. <laughs> you have completely. You had my curiosity. Now you have my attention. Okay. Anyway, please, 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 round describe what is a petty petty pepper challenge. We are really curious, and in the meantime, we'll move on uh, with the mm, with the tasks with the workshop. Yes, because it's time for you to move back to your groups uh, and you will receive, uh, do we do this like uh, they have uh, different boards or they take a part of our main board, Lucas, for creating their games, for brainstorming it? I don't hear you, man. Hello? It's, it's always the same, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, so. uh, I think the best thing is to just, uh, mm, if you want to use InVision, cool but i'm not sure it will help you anyhow uh, in this process i think it's best to move right now uh, in a moment to move into your breakout rooms um, to talk inside your groups how you will be designing a game and one of you may be using the platform to enter all of this information uh, from the very beginning um, what do you think about that uh, yes, of course. Uh, I just meant that if you want to brainstorm something and write something down, you may use Envision. That's that's what I mean. But yeah, I if you want to, sure. There are, uh, in in Envision, uh, apart from the main board, there are also boards created for your groups. If you want to uh, use some uh, post-it notes, uh, some drawings, and so on. Uh, you can you can use it in the vision also no problem. Uh, as for the guide for using the platform, we okay do yeah the, Deborah asked about when uh, when is the finishing time. We have uh, the time schedule for uh, I think it's half uh, uh, quarter past four. So we have uh, thirty minutes for yes. the game. But uh, do we actually have this kind of guide, I believe. Lucas, for using the platform. Yeah. Yes. So, uh, mm, okay. So now, please, uh, what you're going to do, you will enter your groups and brainstorm your game. Try to first and foremost agree on set of goals. And for that, try to make it clear in about five minutes and I will join you in about five minutes in your breakout rooms, uh, or I will be hopping between those breakout rooms to, to maybe assist you if needed. And now I will have uh, a minute to uh, learn what petty paper is. So you may go uh, already. Okay, so again, how much time? It's 10 minutes. About, or... about 10 minutes to create goals no, I said five minutes because five minutes, I'm five, sorry. Yes, yes, five minutes. Remember that you will be able to change those goals at any moment later on. But please coordinate so that you may uh, establish the, the, the foundation early on. 
Oh, it's like okay, it's like podchody. Okay, so we have five minutes. So uh, quarter to four, we see each other back in here, and now uh, you can go to your breakout sessions to discuss inside the groups what will be the goals of your game. Yes, and also uh, indicators. Uh, know the, what why, what you want to achieve. Mm -hmm. Yes. No. 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 I will be joining you. Nie, nie widzimy się tu z powrotem. Yeah. Oh, sorry. We will be. I will be joining you in your groups so that you might not break your workflow. Okay. So so we just divide into into the breakout terms and and wait uh, for Martin to arrive and yes drop some more info. Thank you.